Genesis 1 and 2. One God in six days created everything that was. In days four through six, he fills what he formed in days one through three. Days five and six take a little bit more time with the writer Moses. And he says that God, this single God, created birds, created fish in the sea, and created uh, beasts or animals. And then he says very interestingly, several times in fact, that he would create them according to their own kind. And what he means, of course, is that they're, they're going to reproduce after who they are and stay who they are and relate to their own kind. Well, then there's a break. And still in chapter, or I'm sorry, day six, God says these interesting words, let us make man, create man, in our image. These ideas have made us wonder for years. Well, think like Moses again and his original audience. The, the Hebrew language only had one way to describe a spiritual being, whether a creator being or a created being. Any kind of spirits are called an El, short form or Elohim, long form. Uh, very, very akin to uh, neighboring language like uh, Ugaritic would call the spirit world an ill, a spirit an ill. Akkadian would call the, a, a spirit being an illu. So you see the common uh, language sound among the ancient Near Easterners. So again, this is just common way of describing anything as it were above the horizon, any spiritual personal being, creator or created, it didn't matter, was an Elohim. The only other option for describing a personal being, if it was physical would be an Adam. Don't think name yet, just think title. And so what God does is he stops after, or still in day six, and he says, let us, and he's saying this to apparently other spirits that he had created. We'll have to learn about those later apparently. But he says like a king, again, to his court, making a command, you know, to go to war or something like that. This king says to his other uh, created Elohim, to the other created Elohim, let us make man, and he uses the word, or we use the word Adam here. Now that will be both male and female, because that word can stand for mankind, in our image. Now again, what I think he's saying there is, again, the original understanding of that would be very simple. He had just said that the animal kingdom would be producing after their kind. I think what he's saying is, we are gonna make humans, but we're gonna make them after our kind. We are going to give this, this human pair a privilege of being both physical and spiritual, that they will communicate, they will commune, they will uh, be able to communicate uh, uh, with, as it were, the spirit world, but they can't even communicate with their pet dog. And so that's going to be the world in which they live. Chapter two then is uh, putting them simply in a garden. Remember the story where Adam is placed in a garden called Eden. He is told to not eat of a tree lest he die. Just the simple word for tipping over and stop breathing. And then he is given a human uh, comparable partner, of course called a woman. And this pair very privileged again because it says they are not shamed. Now I think what that's speaking of is they are not afraid of their creator. They're not normally, again, in the ancient Near Eastern world, you would be shamed or potentially shamed in the presence of your deity. That's why, you know, temples had curtains and all that, because you just didn't approach a deity. But this end of chapter two is saying that this couple was, was not shamed to be in the presence of their God, even in that garden. Oh, one more thing, and here's chapter three, don't eat of that tree, lest something terrible happen.